Happy, happy new year. Hey, it's Alicia. Now, if you remember, I think my second video blog that I did was 10 things I don't want to see at your vision 2016. Well, this one's going to be a little bit different from that. This is going to be what I think is in for 2016 and the things that we need to leave back in 2015 slash 2013 slash that was then this is now we are well into the new millennium and so there are a lot of different trends that are kind of cropping up and a few of those trends pretty good some of those trends uh, not so much so let's talk about it we're gonna talk about five things I've got five in each category so five things that are in and five things that are out out number one of things that are in singing in your native language I know that there's been a Eurovision trend and they say that a song is more commercial it's more likely one I guess to sell or for other people to understand it if you sing in English but I think that that trend is gonna start to fade a little bit away it's so nice to see people sing songs in their native language one it gives us kind of a little bit of an international experience and I feel like that's what Eurovision is about. Although it is all about being inclusive and bringing people together, I think it is also really nice to celebrate the diversity that is in Europe. I personally love it when people sing in their native language. I don't understand what they're saying, but I do like it and I do think that's a trend that we're going to see a little bit more of or at least I hope we see a little bit more of that. Ugh. Finally, I think we're getting away from that whole 1990s pop ballad thing. Okay, now, 2015 had a lot of the pop ballads. Some done well, some not so much. Out. But I think we're getting back to a Eurovision that's about having fun. I think we're getting back to a Eurovision that realizes that this is a show and people want to see a show and people want to be entertained in for 2016 and honestly I think the whole power ballad thing really really flopped as a whole out I think for the next couple of years we're gonna see a few countries just completely shying away from even dancing in that route I mean it really really backfired I don't feel like it was the Eurovision that we know and love because even though I do think typically Eurovision songs you know going for the big pop ballad you know used to be kind of a surefire way to win it I don't think that that's happening so much anymore I think it's almost a little bit risky to do the pop ballad out having something that's fun something that's upbeat is gonna give you a better chance at winning than having the pop ballad diversity I'm not saying diversity just for the sake of diversity my number three trend that I want to see happen more of in Eurovision is some diversity I think people might see Europe as this kind of homogenous place and you know I'll even admit it I know there are people of color in Europe but I still think compared to the states um, and parts of Latin America and whatnot I don't think we think about it in being as diverse as it really is on the stage last year we saw some of that diversity I'm not advocating for diversity just for the sake of having diversity that's ridiculous but I will say that a lot of entries at Eurovision that have been kind of shaky on the vocals, the key and the pitch, I have always noticed some amazing, well, I don't really know if they're amazing, but some people of color as background singers. It is really irritating when you watch a performer get up on that stage, be off key, be off pitch, not really dancing very well, and then you see these background singers that happen to be of color, and I'm not gonna lie, the question pops in my mind, I'm like, you know, I bet they probably could have done that better than this person who's in the middle of the stage. Europe is not a homogenous place. It is very, very diverse. Bands! Um, I think we're gonna start seeing a few more bands come to Eurovision. I'm not gonna lie, not all the bands I've seen have been great. But then when there are good bands, they tend to be really, really good. And I'm actually kind of surprised not more bands have actually uh, performed better in, in the scoring. I don't know if that's a jury thing, but I do think we're gonna start seeing more bands, and I kinda love that, like to see kind of a creative force of five people on stage. And of course, if they're all bringing it and they're all doing it, I, I kinda like to see bands, if I can see bands on the stage. Finally, my last thing that I want to be in for 2016, is a bona fide celebrity stepping up and hitting the Eurovision stage. Maybe not 
Adele or Sam Smith, that might be a little bit unrealistic. Already in Ireland, we had someone step up. Bonafide guy, pop star, has had the fame. Um, and he's taken a swing at bringing Ireland back to Eurovision glory, which I think is awesome. And I kind of hope we see a little bit more of that. Even with Australia last year, Guy Sebastian is a pretty big deal there. And he stepped up and said, hey, I'm going to try and rep my country for Eurovision. Also, Ruslana, um, who won for the Ukraine in 04, she was a big, a pretty big star in the Ukraine before she stepped on the Eurovision stage. I like that, and I'd love to see more of that. Now, I do think it is a nice platform for unsigned new artists to use Eurovision to get themselves out there. I'm not saying that we want to completely erase that. I think it's awesome that they have the opportunity to do that. But at the same time, it is also nice to see some of these seasoned performers step up and say, I want to win this for my country and I want to be at Eurovision because I feel like it sounds like a good time. So, yep, so those are my things that we're in. You got to see a lot of smiley me. So now we're going to get serious because now we're going to talk about the things that are out, the trends that I don't want to see too much more of that. And I want those things to hopefully fade a little bit to black because we've done it. They've lived their lives. Now it's time to switch it up. Out. You know what's out for Eurovision 2016? Duets, okay? Out. I just feel like duets end up letting us down because there ends up being a laziness about it. It's like instead of having two people 100% giving us the audience, the viewers at home, amazing performances. I think we end up with like kind of mediocre vocalists and like where one person lacks, the other person kind of picks up for them. But like, not really. Like that's not really what happens. It ends up being kind of lazy. Even when Azerbaijan won with that, what, I'm running, I'm, yeah. I didn't like that number either. Oh my God, what was that act last year? Oh, Norway. Wow, yeah, Norway really let me down because I actually like Silent Storm was the year before that, right? Yeah, it was. And that actually, I really liked that act. I know it was one guy and some people didn't like it and it was like a power ballad, but I thought it was a power ballad done differently. I, look, I understand it's worked in the past. Look, let's just say goodbye to that. I hope y'all had your duet fill because I'm over it. I don't know, maybe you're not over it, but better get used to it I hope they stop doing that <laughs> not all together but like maybe like more than two do what's a year is already like too much in my book honestly out okay so I also know that there was this weird trend of people not trying to have choreography because they felt like Eurovision was kind of silly so they wanted to be stripped down and like be real and by being real they decided just to be boring nah you can be real with a good song with some meaningful lyrics, a good heartfelt performance, hitting all your notes correctly, but do not get on that stage and just sit there and sing a song. Like that is so boring. You know, it's gonna be real stripped down, me just with my microphone and a guitar. You better hope that that song is amazing and your vocals are perfect, beyond perfect. You know what, I'm gonna be real. Most of y'all are not that good to sit on stage with no choreography, with just a guitar and a microphone. Microphone. I'm sorry, you're actually not that good to do that. So just don't, like don't shoot yourself in the foot by doing that. This is Eurovision. I wanna see glitter, I want choreography. I want a show, I want to see a show. Okay, this I have to say has been a thing that's been on 100 and I've already started to notice this in some of the Eurovision preliminary rounds, but I'm gonna throw it out there right now. Okay, Adele just came out with an album. We got the CD. We don't need a whole bunch of females on stage trying to sound like Adele. She's back, like we got the new album. You are not singing hello, okay? So I don't need to hear your best Adele impression. I need to hear you sing. I want to hear how you sound. There was a lot of that last year. There was probably about 50% of that the year before last. And I would like that to be a trend that just stops. Sound like you. Sound unique. Sound like an individual. Like, again, Adele just came out with her album. We got it. We love it. We can listen to that. If we want to listen to Adele, trust me, we'll listen to Adele. Okay? We don't need to hear your best Adele interpretation. 
Like I'm, I'm so over that. I'm, I'm like, I'm so over that. And like to the point where that one girl Astrid in the Belgium semifinal, like she had a great voice, and her song was okay. Um, it definitely was not a Eurovision song. And I mean, and she does have a great voice, but the minute she opened her mouth, it just was like, please, like you're not Adele. I don't even want to listen to the rest of this. Like this is a waste of time. Or if that is truly your voice. How about this, you choose a song that like Adele would never do. You know, so then we don't have to worry about having all of those comparisons. Like, just, I'm so over that, I'm so over that. Ugh, message songs, okay, I get it. Something interesting is happening in your country. There is a charity that you really care, out, care about, that you wanna promote, I get it. If you're gonna do a message song, make sure you do it well. And this is kind of the same thing as I said about like the whole no choreography thing that I want to be out. You can do a message song all day. Just make sure that that song is well written, isn't ridiculous, and that you have the vocals to carry it. Please do not do a message song and think that you will automatically get points just because the song that you are singing has some substance. Like that is not how it works. If you sound like garbage, the song is cheesy and simple and basic and goes nowhere, like that song will still get no points, period. This is the Eurovision song contest, period. Sing your message song all day, but it better sound good and you better be on key and it better not be a whack song if you want points. Now, if you don't want points, then I don't even know why you're showing up and wasting our time for real. Finally, my last thing that is out, kids getting on stage. When I say kids, I mean unseasoned, immature performers that are lacking confidence. And I mean that confidence in their stage presence and in their voices as well, because we can sense it. We can sense it. Loic from Belgium was actually one of the youngest performers, but probably was the most seasoned professional performer on that stage. Not all, not out of all, but he was definitely good. Aminata from Latvia, great. But homegirl from Iceland, she was just too young. She was too young. Look, this is not junior Eurovision. This is Eurovision. I expect to see professional level stuff. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm crazy. But I expect to see professional level stuff. I don't want to see a whole bunch of kids on stage straining their voices, being off key, not selling a song because they just don't have that confidence um, that someone maybe more mature would have. So, and real talk, I'm saying kids, but really what I mean is like unseasoned performers who are gonna get on stage and not be confident. Why as a country would you even wanna have that person represent you? Like you wouldn't, you wouldn't. This is not junior Eurovision. This is Eurovision. Well, those are my trends that are in and my trends that are out. <laughs> out. Do you think I left something off? Do you not agree with me? All you need to do is talk to me in the comments. I'm so excited. We keep getting closer to Eurovision 2016. I, I actually can't believe it. I'm like, we are so close. I keep looking at the calendar and I'm like, Oh my gosh, it's going to be here before we know it. <laughs> Later. <laughs>